Good morning. I am Jason T. Paulos from Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering, Adi Shankar Institute of Engineering and Technology. Today, I present my research paper on bandwidth optimization technique of microstrip patch antenna for IoT applications. To start with, I would like to give a brief introduction about microstrip patch antennas and why we took that as our topic. So, microstrip patch antennas are those antennas which are widely used in wireless applications. Now, it is used because of their various advantages which includes like lightweight, low cost, low profile and the ease of planar circuit integration. Therefore, enhancing the parameters like bandwidth gain and directivities are always a challenge for microstrip patch antennas. In this paper, we are going to deal how we can increase or how we can widen the bandwidth of microstrip patch antennas by using different techniques. So before that, what are bandwidth? Bandwidth is basically defined as the range of frequencies over which an antenna can perform effectively. So for broadband antennas, the bandwidth is expressed as the ratio of highest to the lowest frequencies within the acceptable range. The point that we have to note down here is that no single universal method for bandwidth enhancement is there. So with applications, the techniques would be changed. So, as a primary objective of this study is to review and compare various techniques that are aimed at improving the bandwidth of microstrip patch antennas without compromising the inherent benefits. To start with our techniques, the very first technique is our feeding techniques. In feeding techniques, we have two types of techniques that are microstrip feed and coaxial feed. So what are contact techniques or contact feeding? Here the microstrip feed will be having a direct contact with the radiating patch. So in microstrip feed, you can see in the figure, the feed is in direct contact with the microstrip patch and there is a port at the edge of this microstrip patch. Okay, so that is microstrip feed. So it is very easy to integrate but the limitation is the bandwidth would be either narrow or it would be limited one. To get a one step ahead of this particular technique, we have coaxial feed technique. In coaxial feed technique, we have a coaxial waveguide inside through which there would be a pin that would be connected to the patch through that substrate. So here, impedance matching is very much easier and it would be very much accurate. Therefore, the limitation it possesses are bandwidth constraint as well as cross polarization radiations. Coming to the next one, that is the non-contact techniques which include aperture coupled field and proximity coupled field. In aperture coupled field, we can see that there are uh, different substrates. So substrate split into two by the ground plane. So there would be ground plane between the two substrates and there would be a slot between that through which the electromagnetic waves from the field can reach up to the top of the patch. Coming to the next one, that is the proximity coupled field. In proximity coupled field, there will be two dielectric substance, substrates for feed line and radiating patch. So the advantage is it possesses that wide bandwidth, but the limitation it offers is that it is difficult to fabricate and the length of the field should be regulated. Coming to the next technique, that is the substrate thickness. So changing the thickness of the dielectric substrate definitely leads to a change in bandwidth. So thicker the substrate, it offers high gain as well as wide bandwidth. So you are getting two main parameters in increased. So what happens is that when we increase the height or the thickness of the substrate, the capacitive effect gets reduced and the inductive effect gets increased. So as you can see in the table, it is clearly shown when the thickness is high, then the bandwidth gets increased. The technique that we are going to discuss is using different dielectric substrate. What happens when we use different dielectric substrate is that it directly affects the electric field. So higher dielectric constant leads to more compact design. Looking at the table, we can infer is that at the same thickness of the substrate, when we use different substrate materials, the substrate material with the lowest dielectric constant have given the wider bandwidth than others. So using a lower dielectric substrate gives us wider bandwidth. Coming to the next technique, that is the defective ground structures. These are nothing but we are incorporating a defects in our ground plane. Normally in antennas, the ground plane is very smooth, but in this particular technique, we are using some defects in our ground plane. So what it ha makes is that it uh, like uh, changes or alters the direction of the currents that are flowing. Therefore, it will suppress the surface wave and it will enhance both the bandwidth as well as the gain. The next technique is introducing air gaps. So air gaps are introduced between the ground plane as well as the substrate. So what happens is that it will improve the bandwidth as well as the gain. To incorporate this particular technique, we have to use a lower dielectric material. Also, it leads to low return loss, which is a favorable radiation pattern. So using different air gaps, we can see the different results. As we increase the air gaps, the bandwidth get narrower. So when we keep the air gap between the substrate and the ground plane as low as 1 mm, we get a wider bandwidth. The next and the last technique is using geometrical techniques, it's using different shapes of a patch. The patch can be either rectangular, triangular, circular, elliptical, hexagonal and octagonal. So using different patch, we can gain different bandwidths. So using a rectangular patch, we can get narrow bandwidth. Using triangular, we can get slightly wider bandwidth. Using the circular, we can get a widest bandwidth of all. But by using elliptical, we can get a bandwidth which is wider than rectangular or triangular one. By using hexagonal and octagonal, we get a slightly narrower band than the circular and the hexagonal one. All different patches is having different difficulty levels to implement, as well as their radiation efficiencies vary. 
coming to the conclusion we can conclude that that different applications require different range of bandwidths therefore it is important to understand the application and which techniques is going to be useful for a particular application because there is no universal technique that is going to be applied for all the applications so coming when we used the geometrical techniques we have seen that the bandwidth get increased and the complexity and the cost would be lower using the contact methods and non contact feeding methods we gained narrow as well as wider bandwidth among that using the proximity coupled feed we got a wider bandwidth but the complexity is very high as well as the cost is also high using air gaps we have seen that the minimal the air gap the increased bandwidth is there also coming to the dielectric substrate as well as using thick substrate when we use a thick substrate when the thickness is increased then the bandwidth is also increased but in case of dielectric substance as low as the dielectric constant the bandwidth get wider one when using defective ground structure what we have observed is that the bandwidth and the gain is increased Acknowledging the authors, Rahul Krishnan, S. Kalaiwani, Ramu R, Manish Vyam, and Selina Chagar has given their best valuable points in order to make this research paper a successful one. These are the references that I have used, which have given a clear idea of the content that I have to present, as well as given an idea on various methods and techniques that can be used according to different applications. Thank you.